Good morning. Today we're going to talk about two things that dominate the novel, I think. The first one is the noise, and the second one is the knife. Now, there are a lot of other things that I think are important, but I think these two are the key elements of how Todd is expressing himself in this first installment of the trilogy. The noise, I think we've already established, is the thing that dominates the town. It's the thing that dominates Todd's life. It is the thing where he can say there ain't nothing but. Everything around him is noise. Every place he goes is noise. That's why he was so affected by the hole in the noise, because it was a thing that he had never experienced before. And everything in his life has been dominated by this assault nothing but the constant thought of men and things coming at you and at you it's an assault and the noise just takes away any element of i can be quiet for just a second it's a constant assault on the senses this assault on the senses also affects his identity and i think it's important to remember that everything we do with the young adult novels at some level or another has something to do with identity. Young adult novels are about how the kid, how the young adult establishes his identity. I do think it's important to understand here that Todd has a way of using his identity. Even if it's a simple act of repeating his name like a mantra, he can get his identity back by calmly reasserting who he is. But the identity is destroyed by the assault of the noise, or it gets lost, to use the term on screen. It gets lost by the assault of the noise. And I think it's important to understand that this assault is what destroys who and what people are. It's what drives men mad, to use one of the quotes uh, from uh, yesterday, or from the previous class period. And then, because it's this constant assault, you can't make sense of it all. He talks about men's minds are messy places and noise is like the active breathing face of that mess. So if you're always being assaulted by men's thoughts and sometimes the thoughts are the truth, sometimes the thoughts are what people want to be true, sometimes the thoughts are fantasies, sometimes the thoughts are realities, reality, excuse me, all of that is is an important element of in making sense of it and you can't make sense of it because you're getting everything and it is constantly coming at you the important part to understand here is that there is no escape that hole in the noise was almost as frightening as the noise itself because he has never had a moment in his life when he was not assaulted by all of this noise It's important to understand that not only is noise coming in, his noise goes out. And his noise reveals him. His noise is who he is. And as much as he's trying to get his identity, as much as he's trying to control who and what he is, I think it's important to understand that the noise reveals. And the noise is going to reveal it in a messy way because Todd is just like everybody else. He's going to have truth. He's going to have lies. He's going to have everything else that goes with him. But the noise is going to reveal him. And also, if we remember this quotation, this is Aaron talking, and it's just that the noise reveals where Todd's hiding. It, there's no place to hide. There's no place to hide who you are. And so... Not only is your identity lost in the noise to yourself, but your identity is revealed to everyone else. It is, I think, a scary situation. Uh, it takes that mirrors and windows things from Paper Town, puts it on steroids, and then gives it some LSD to really screw it up badly. People can practice hiding the noise. Um, we see that in Far Branch, where the women are able to 
um, still hear the, the noise, but the men have gotten to the point where they can suppress some of it. Um, although the fact is Hildy still hears everything, so it really doesn't matter, but the men have been able to practice hiding the noise. Also, it's important, I think, when we think back about this assault thing, that the noise isn't just the thoughts. The noise is revealing these emotions, and those emotions are revealed in colors. Um, so the assault is all of the, well, I don't know about all of the senses, but it's certainly uh, sound and sight. Okay. And those things, I think, are important to understand. If it's uh, giving you stuff from taste, uh, it's probably even worse. Also, it's on repeat forever. This idea that it just keeps ta talking forever and ever, the idea that this assault continues forever and ever, that there is no escape from this assault, repeats the idea that the noise is a dangerous thing, the noise is a debilitating thing, the noise is a thing that is going to cause harm to Todd's identity. Because look, one of the great things about making mistakes is forgetting about them. And so if you can't forget about them because the noise keeps coming at you, once again, the the idea that you have no escape is important, not just because it's always there, as in the, the present, but that the past is also always there. Uh, we had Ishmael Bey's um, comment about his past and present and his future. Uh, the noise seems to have almost a worse effect uh, than the war does, than the war did. And yes, the noise is a metaphor. Just like paper towns where everything became kind of this extended metaphor, the noise for Patrick Ness is a metaphor. Ness has explained that its information is everywhere, text and emails and messaging. You can't get away from it. Nobody seems to want to turn off the phone. The internet is metaphorically appearing in the form of the noise. We can't get away from things. Ness is trying to make a point about that and the point that it's going to drive us crazy. Now, he's making a lot of other points about the relationship between men and women. He's making a lot of other points about technology. He's making points about um, pride and everything else uh, that goes into creating a tragic character. But the noise is part of that, and the noise is a metaphor. Just like uh, things were in paper towns. Okay. The second thing that I want to get to here is the knife. The idea of the knife of never letting go being right in the title, the idea of the knife being something important throughout the whole book. Uh, if you've got to the end, you'll see it is an essential thing uh, throughout the book. But let's talk about some of the direct quotations where the knife gets mentioned. First of all, it seems as if this knife is more than just a knife. It's something that he wanted for a birthday. But also this idea, it cuts practically everything in the world. It almost begins as this metaphor right off the bat. It cuts practically everything in the world. The idea that can cut through material that perhaps other knives can't, the idea that Ben has created this perfectly balanced, sharp, wonderful instrument I think is an important element uh, of the novel, uh, this tool that matters be to Todd because it's something wonderful. And look, as, as a person who carries too many pocket knives or owns too many pocket knives, I think the idea of being attracted by a knife as a tool is important. The idea that liking it just for the object it is, I think is wonderful. But this is a little bit more than it cuts practically everything in the world, okay? This almost moves it from a tool kind of into Excalibur uh, land into metaphor land almost right off the bat. Then he talks about the knife as a choice. I think also he's reverting 
the choice. Okay. Um, when I think of the choice, it's, okay, there's a knife. Do I like the style? Do I like the maker? Can I afford the price? But he is kind of having a different view, and he's almost got a contradiction right in the statement. It's not a thing. It's a choice. Once again, he's setting up the metaphor. He's developing layers. Remember that metaphors are always, always developed in layers. They're not just a one-time thing. They're developed in layers. The knife is doing the choosing. The knife is taking the decision out of the hand. It's not that I'm choosing the knife. The knife is almost choosing me. And again, that makes it Excalibur. That makes it metaphoric. And if those things, I think, are important. Perhaps he's just engaging in the cliche of when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But I think it's just one more layer of the knife developing special meaning as the novel progresses. He is once again mistaking the obvious. It's a powerful thing. He has to agree with it rather than it um, becoming a part of him. And again, I think it's this idea that a lot of times we think we're defined by our stuff. Um, my comp class, we did an essay about are Americans defined by their stuff. This uh, screen cap from a YouTube video, which knife best defines me, we're defined by our stuff. Okay. And here the knife is reversing that one more time. Todd has to agree to be a part of it. The knife lets Todd help define it, not the other way around. Power, look, it's a tool. The idea that we're dealing with this tool, the idea that we're dealing with um, something that's got a sharp edge that cuts practically everything in the world, but it's the idea that it is power. Also, he is, you know, throughout the, the novel, he is fighting to use it. He is fighting to hold off from, you know, killing a human being with it. He does kill the spackle. And that, I think, also eats at his soul. Uh, but he does kill the human being with, or he tries to avoid killing the human being with it. Um, we'll come back to that a little bit later. And then the idea of casting all the blame from itself to the boy who uses it. I think there's an understanding of he has to start taking responsibility. He has to start taking control of his own actions. And the knife, after he is, you know, used it badly or failed to use it in a way that he thinks he should have, he understands that it is a tool. All of the layers that make it a symbol in the novel do not change the fact that it is this tool and that he is still a kid or he is still a young adult. He is not able to handle everything that gets thrown at him. And the idea that the knife, because it has all of these layers of symbolism, can blame him is just one more level of showing that he is blaming himself. When this happens, I think it's important to understand that the knife is a talisman. The talisman begins as the normal object. It takes on added significance as the literary work progresses and it becomes something more than itself, and it may become something supernatural. On the screen, you'll notice that I've taken one of my pocket knives and covered up the, the knife um, on the cover. Uh, this knife is not supernatural. However, it has taken on significance to me because one, it's a knife that I like. Two, it was a gift for my stepson. Three, it comes from Taiwan when he visited Taiwan. And so he spent time in this foreign country looking for something for me instead of just enjoying the sights. Third, the story behind the knife is that it's made on a 
one of the islands just off of the off of the main island of Taiwan. And this island was shelled during World War II. Also, when the revolution happened in China in the mid 20th century, uh, the nationalist government uh, that evacuated to Taiwan and the people who moved to Taiwan uh, with them, um, this island was shelled by the Chinese as well. And there weren't a lot of people living on it, but now there are all of these shells that have exploded from the war and from uh, the, the revolution and everything. And the knife makers are taking those shells, melting them down and making knives out of them. They're making kitchen knives, pocket knives, hunting knives. And so now not only is it a gift, not only is it a gift direct from the maker, not only is it a gift for my stepson, which makes me very, very happy, uh, was once again bought in a foreign country, but it has this unique story that comes with it. Again, it's not supernatural, but for me, it is almost a talisman. It's the knife I don't want to lose. It's the knife I don't want to leave the house because I want to always have it with me. It's sitting on the table to open my mail. It's taking on added significance, not something supernatural, but added significance. So as we try to wrap this thing up today, I think there's two things to remember. Number one, the noise is an extended metaphor. Number two, the knife is an extended metaphor that goes throughout the novel. We'll pick this thing, we'll pick things up again on Friday. I hope everybody has a good day.